Hello dear viewer and welcome to a closer look at Beatrice Chenchi. So a quick breakdown, this video is going to be broken down into three parts. Uh, number one is the introduction, number two is the key aspects which will consist of departure from source material, imagery, and symbolism, and then number three will just be the conclusion. Alright, so to start. Percy Shelley's five-act poetry tragedy, The Chenchi, was first published to London in 1819. It's known for its compelling characters, expressive language, and moral dilemmas. Um, but it's actually based off of a real Italian family, the Chenchi family. However, this is going to be focused mainly on Beatrice Chenchi, and this is set in Rome during the Renaissance period. So the Chenchi revolves around the central character, Beatrice Chenchi, and her struggle against her abusive father, Count Francesco Chenchi. The play opens with the introduction of the Chenchi family and their various problems, including Count Francesco's abusive behavior towards his children and wife. Beatrice, along with her stepmother and brother, conspire to kill Chenchi and end his reign of terror. The Count is murdered and the family is arrested and brought to trial for his death. The family is tried and sentenced for the murder, with Beatrice as the main culprit. Despite her claims of self-defense and her father's abusive behavior, the court finds her guilty. Ultimately, Beatrice is sentenced to death and is executed. The play ends with the condemnation of the Chenchi family by the Pope, highlighting the corruption and injustice of the church, which is like a big, big theme in this story, but not one I'll be focusing on today. So let's get into the more specifics in the key aspects. All right, so here we have departure from source material. So this is just gonna be a micro segment because I think that it's worth mentioning that the whole reason why the Chenchi was written was because Shelley was so inspired by the painting, the portrait of Beatrice Chenchi. It was off this painting of Beatrice alone that Shelley developed this whole fictional world accompanied by complex, corrupt, morally gray figures, along with historical context, feminist ideals, and so much more. So in the case of the Chenchi, the source material is really a single painting of Beatrice alongside with the real Chenchi family's likeness. And I'd like to talk more on this, but I am working within a word count here. All right. Now on to imagery. Bruh. So the themes of the play are heavily depicted through imagery. Beatrice specifically is depicted through numerous haunting images that contribute to the atmosphere and depth of the story. One of the most predominant images surrounding Beatrice is that she's a fair-haired angel. So this image is first introduced in Act 1, Scene 2, when Count Chenchi describes her as that fair-haired angel of a girl, which sounds innocent enough, but with the context of the story in this description, it's pretty disturbing and, and just gross. Um, the use of the word angel suggests that Beatrice is pure and innocent, and the adjective fair-haired further supports this. However, as the play progresses, the image of Beatrice starts to change. In Act 3, Scene 1, Count Chenchi says that Beatrice's tears and sighs, like little jets of steam, seem to vaporize and drop away. The image of her tears and sighs as little jets of steam suggests that the once innocent and delicate Beatrice has become consumed by intense emotion and passion. It seems that Beatrice is becoming hotter, which is often associated with feelings of anger and passion, which obviously it's understandable why Beatrice would be angry. Um, at this point in the story, Beatrice's emotions are starting to bubble over, becoming harder to conceal as time goes on. Finally, the comparison between the image of the Count Chenchi as a gray-haired monster and Beatrice as a fair-haired angel who has been engulfed by tears and sighs and lives a life of tears and sorrows is made. Act 3, Scene 2, when Orzano refers to Count as a gray-haired monster full of craft and rage, is when this idea is first established. The term gray-haired emphasizes the Count's age and the accumulation of his depravity through time, while the word monster denotes that he is terrible and monstrous. And that's about all for imagery. Now on to symbolism. One of the most prominent symbols associated with Beatrice is the symbol of light. As I just discussed, Beatrice is described throughout the play as having fair hair and a fair complexion, which symbolizes her purity. 
These images are in stark contrast to the darkness of the imagery surrounding Count Chenchi, who, as we know, is described as a gray-haired monster. Light and dark are complete opposites and oftentimes associated with good and evil. Another important symbol associated with Beatrice is fire. In Act 3, Scene 2, Orzano describes Beatrice as having a spirit which, like fire, subsists upon the air. Like we discussed in the imagery section, the use of the symbol of fire reinforces the idea that Beatrice is consumed by intense emotion and passion, and that she has evolved into a force of destruction. The symbol of blood is also used in the play to reinforce the themes of justice and revenge. Blood is a symbol that has been used in stories for centuries. In Act 3, Scene 2, Giacomo says that the blood of the Chenji is upon her hands. This image of the blood serves to emphasize the idea that the revenge Beatrice has taken upon the Count has permanently stained her. She may have taken revenge, but this didn't undo his terrible actions, and Beatrice will have to carry that with her for the rest of her life. Finally, the symbol of death is also used in the play to reinforce the themes of justice and revenge that Beatrice embodies. In Act 3, Scene 2, Bernardo says that death is the only punishment which I can inflict, which emphasizes the idea that the Count's evil has finally caught up with him and that it's time to face the consequences of his actions. So that is all I have for symbolism. Now on to the conclusion. Beatrice is the embodiment of innocence and virtue in the play, and her character serves to highlight the corrupt and evil nature of the Count. Through her interactions with other characters and her experiences of abuse, the audience is given a glimpse into the devastating impact that violence and cruelty can have on an individual. At the time the play was written, in the early 19th century, Beatrice's character served as a symbol of resistance against oppressive systems, especially those that were patriarchal. The play ends with her execution, which is a poignant reminder of the cost of resistance and the power of the oppressor. Beatrice's drive for revenge reinforces the idea that the fight for justice always has been and always will be a fundamental aspect of the human experience, and that the individuals who are denied justice may be driven to take matters into their own hands. So that's going to be all for the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.